Hello, I'm Matthew. And I'm Joe. And today we're going to be looking at Nakama, uh, and specifically Nakama with Unity. Now, if you don't know, Nakama is an open source games backend server. So you can do things like social, real time, multiplayer, and as it's open source, you can run it wherever you want. Okay, so Joe, what are we specifically looking at in this video? Absolutely. Today you're going to get started on the Karma with Unity. So we're going to start a new Unity project. We're going to go ahead and grab the Karma SDK for Unity from the Asset Store, and then we're going to get our client set up so that our uh, Unity game can speak to our Karma server. Which brings us to our first point. You're going to need a Karma server running to follow this tutorial, whether that's on your own machine or somewhere on the internet. If you don't know how to get Nakama set up and running, we recommend you watch our previous videos in this series. You can find them on this channel or on the link below, and you can get that. You can follow those tutorials for Docker or running it on a DigitalOcean droplet as well. So let's get started. First of all, what I'm going to do is open up Unity, and I'm going to have uh, this is the Unity Hub where we can create new projects and also download versions of Unity. Make sure that you've got a long-term support version of Unity installed. So at the time of filming this video, I'm using Unity 2018.4.5. Any long-term support version will be great, and you can see right here that it's got long-term support. With that in place, let's create a new project. I'm just going to go ahead and hit this new button, and that will bring up the template projects. For demonstration purposes, I'm going to make a 2D game just because it keeps the editor nice and clean and simple. So let's go ahead and create that project. Unity will now do its thing and it will open up our editor. So just while it's doing that, yeah. are there any specific things that are different about working with Unity in Nakama than Unity and some other tool or framework? Absolutely not. As you'll see in a moment when we get into the Asset Store, Unity uh, has this wonderful asset store where you can grab things like 3D assets, scripts, libraries, SDKs. Uh, Nakama is in there alongside any other material you may download for Unity, and you can grab and import that to your project just as you would any other Unity asset. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. Now our editor is open. Uh, right up here, above next to scene and game, we've got the asset store. Um, you can also access this from a browser, but we're going to do it right in the, uh, in the editor for ease of use. And we're going to search for assets. So I'm going to search for Nakama, and that will bring me up the Nakama entry. So this is the page from Nakama. You've got all the package details, what files are in it, the tags. You can see the description of it. Let's just go ahead and import it straight away. Uh, if this is your first time importing this asset, this will look a bit different for you. It will. Um, there's a stage where you have to add it to your account. Right, but right now, because I've done that before, I can import it straight away. You might see it as well saying buy, but yes. it is free, right? It may say buy or purchase, but as this gigantic piece of text says right here, it is completely free. It's just the way the asset store uh, assigns licenses to things. Um, that will bring up a modal which lets us select all of the parts that we have in this uh, asset. And the defaults are okay? The defaults are great. And actually, while we've got this open, it'd be a good time to talk about some of the things that you're going to get with this asset. So obviously, we're going to get the library. The Nakama uh, SDK for Unity wraps all of the functionality of Nakama. It does have all of the uh, features we spoke about earlier. We can create real-time chat channels. We can do matchmaking. We can do everything you can find in the Nakama docs right here from this client. Um, but also it brings us some other cool things that are very helpful. So we're going to get a copy of that documentation. So if you're developing uh, offline or you want to get it within the Unity editor, you can open a PDF right here. Um, we're also going to get this collection of snippets. So if you look, if you need real-time examples, real-time examples. Um, if you need real examples of any of the functionality we're demonstrating, you've got a code example right in your editor that you can open. Uh, so let's go ahead and import that. Once that's imported, it's going to show up in our project viewer under the assets folder again just like any other Unity imported asset. So if I now open the project folder, you'll see in our assets folder, we've got this Nakama folder. We don't have to open or do anything with that. Um, what's now important though, is if we started to make a new C Sharp script, um, we would be able to use the, the library we just imported. Right. So let's go ahead and do that. What I'm gonna do is create a new C Sharp script and it doesn't particularly matter where, um, typically we'd create a scripts folder and do it in there, but I'm just gonna stick it here for now. And I'm gonna name it uh, Nakama client. Important to name it at the point of creation. Uh, when you create a new C-sharp script in Unity, um, it does create a class that inherits from Unity's uh, mono behavior um, API. Uh, and if we don't name it now, there'll be a line to change in the code later. Uh, so I've created that, and now I'm gonna double click it to open it up with the free Visual Studio Community Edition that comes bundled with Unity, which has a Unity integration and helps us debug in real time. First thing I'm going to do is import Nakama. That's super easy. We've already downloaded that asset from the asset store. So I just need to go using Nakama. And there we go. We're good to go. So that's the only thing we need to import at this stage. Next up, 
we want to uh, initialize a client. So this uh, script we're creating is the client, which is going to connect to our Unity server. To do that, we need to uh, basically make a new instance of a client object. And that's very easy to do, which can make it a private read only. Uh, this isn't strictly necessary, but it's good practice. This client is going to be read only. It's only going to read um, from the Nakama server. Um, connections going to the server, we'll see in a later video, are done through sockets. So this, is, this can be read only at this point. Uh, so I'm just going to do private read only, and it's going to be an iClient. So it's an instance of the client object. And we're going to call that client. And then as with any other C-sharp object, we're going to create a new. And then uh, client takes, uh, creating a new client, the constructor for this takes four parameters. The first is the communication method, which I'm going to put as HTTP. In a real life situation, I hope you'll be using HTTPS, got to be secure. At this point, we then need to put our server uh, IP address. If you're doing this locally, that's going to be localhost 127.0.0.1. If you're doing it on DigitalOcean, it's going to be your IP address. So I'm going to go ahead and put in a local one for now. And next up is the port. This is the port that we're communicating to uh, the Nakama API on. We'll go with 7350 for that. Uh, you might, if you're using RPC rather than HTTP, you might have a different port here. Uh, but for HTTP, 7350 is the correct one. And then finally, the key with which our client will uh, authenticate with the server. We're going to use the def inbuilt default key just for demonstration purposes. As with HTTP in production, please make sure you generate an actual key and authenticate securely. So once that's done, that is our client object set up. We can now uh, talk and communicate to Nakama. So how are we going to demonstrate that? Let's authenticate a user. So Matthew, there's a couple of ways we can create users with Nakama. And I think you ran through some of them in your previous videos. Yeah, so you've got email, mm -hmm. device ID, then there's various social sign-ins right. like uh, Game Center, Facebook, whatever it might be. But you can also do your own homespun thing, which is right. a bit more in-depth. We won't look at that today. Yeah. So what are you going to go with now? Uh, for simplicity's sake, I think I'm going to do email and password. So if this was a real game, I might have a user log in with an email and password when they sign up. Social sign up, especially for mobile games, is very popular. But as we're doing email and password, let's just go ahead and put some hard-coded strings in here now just for demonstration purposes. So I have our email being typical hello at example.com. And then our password being hard-coded in is going to be incredibly secure. So we'll have password equals very secure. Wonderful. And that's your normal password for that everything, right? That is my password for yeah. everything, my bank, uh, my GitHub, the whole lot. Cool. Um, don't, don't take that. So um, that now, our user, our fake user is now set up. We now need to actually make the client authenticate to the server. So what we're going to do is we're going to start, we're going to call this a session because this is taking a user's credentials and authenticating and creating a session. Um, and we will do await client, and I'll explain this after we've done it. Authenticate client, and I'm going to just auto-complete this for the email async. So let's walk through that a minute. So first of all, we're using a wait here because this is our game client going and communicating with the server. And so that could take a little while depending on connectivity. So we're going to be doing this asynchronously. We'll come back to that in a moment. This won't be a surprise if you've seen the previous ones that were done in JavaScript as well. Yeah, absolutely. There are many ways of doing async or doing this kind of stuff in Unity. Um, if you've used older versions of Unity, you might be familiar with the task-based approach. Um, we're going to use async await because it's a bit more uh, kind of modern and contemporary and simpler. Um, so then, as Matthew said, there are many different ways to authenticate with Nakama. This method we're using here is authenticate email async. Very straightforward. You can probably easily see already how you would swap that out for a social login or a device ID login. We just change authenticate to device ID, async, et cetera. Um, and this can take two parameters, our email and our password, which we already set up. Wonderful. So that session is now uh, done. Um, and when we run this code, that will uh, go ahead and create that user. On uh, When you send this request to Nakama, if it doesn't recognize those credentials, it will create a new user. If it does recognize those credentials, it will just log the user in. Uh, so let's just debug that. Uh, we'll output that to log so we can see the session. This will return a session object. So you'll have noted that I said we'd come back to await in a minute. Uh, that's because uh, we are, as we're using the await keyword, this whole function needs to be async. Mm -hmm. So we're going to go ahead and throw the async keyword in front of void start. Start is an inbuilt method in Unity. And basically what it means is that when our game starts up, any game objects with this code on it will run this, uh, will run this piece of code first like, as the game starts, which initializing our client, a very natural place to do that. So now it's an async function. So it will run that. It will do, make the connection to the client and get back the result. So that now done. Um, 
actually running code in Unity uh, in a Unity game is a little bit more involved than this. We've created the script, but this script isn't attached to anything within our game. So we need to go back to Unity and actually attach that script to a game object. That's really simple. Um, Unity already, well, you can create a new game object here. You can create an empty game object and that'd be just fine. But we actually have a game object we can attach this to already, that being the main camera. So I'm just going to drag this script up to the uh, main camera in the hierarchy and that will then uh, attach it. And if I open it in the inspector, you'll see that the script is attached and it's ready to go. Now when I click play, we'll see some output coming up down here and I can click on that to expand the log and we'll see that my session has been created. I've got the auth token for my session uh, and we can see that that has gone through successfully. One final thing we can do to check, we can actually open up the Nakama web console. So I'm going to open mine up, uh, which is on uh, localhost and then port 7351. Again, substitute that with the IP your server's on, but you can go to the console with 7351. And then when I go to that and log in with the standard credentials, admin and password, I can go to users and I can see the user that I have created. And I can look at their account and see the email address that I've set for them. So I know it's been successful. I know that our Unity game is connected to our server and that we're ready to get on and make a successful game. Brilliant, okay, thanks Joe. So uh, stick with us for the next video in which we're gonna look at some of the real-time functionality of Nakama through Unity. So I guess that's it, thanks a lot. Thank you.